Detronis here. Today I'm bringing you an updated video of my best build guide in Witcher 3, specifically in the Blood and Wine timeline, the last piece of DLC. I got tired of people saying this build doesn't do any damage, and that's only because I made the build more defensive than offensive. Like I said, this build is very malleable, it's very flexible in the way you want to play. With a few skill changes, I can do a whirl build, I can do a rend build, or I can just do a fast attack and strong build that has more of an emphasis on leeching HP from the enemy. And I decided to make this video because I got my build to a kind of sweet spot. Um, I haven't had to sacrifice too much vitality, I actually have about 10,500 vitality, but my damage compared to the last video is 3 to 5 times larger. If you've caught it several times in this video alone, I've done about 35,000 damage on a single Rin charge up. And depending on the monster type, I've gotten my fast attack critical strikes up to 11,000 sometimes. Of course you can take this build and change it the way you want it. There's no hard and fast rule to say this is the way you play. But this build still retains, to me, the best build title. And that's because, man, it's just too good. The alchemy toxic melee build is just too good. So let's go ahead and show you the build. I won't take too long comparatively to the last video, but let's get it out there. And by the way, all the footage in this video is on Death March and the New Game Plus. So first we have our staple tissue transformation. Every decoction gives us a thousand more vitality, and we can have three decoctions up with our current toxicity. Next we have Hunter Instinct. That means when our adrenaline points are at 3, our critical hit damage goes up to 100%. Next we have Heightened Tolerance, and this helps prevent toxicity from doing damage to us at high levels. And then we have Endure Pain. This builds about maintaining high amounts of toxicity, and this will reward us with high vitality in return. Now this next mutation side effects isn't necessary. I had an extra slot so I decided to put it on, and it is kind of nice. Usually when I charge into battle with a thunderbolt it might give me a swallow or some other helpful potion for free. This next mutation synergy makes our mutagens placed in these mutagen slots 50% stronger, that's how I have 900 vitality or 60% attack power. Now, killing spree is very nice. When you kill an enemy in a fight, you get 50% more crit chance. So essentially, with this build right now, every hit is a critical hit after I kill one enemy. Practically. Now, acquired tolerance is a must. Every time you collect a new formula, it increases your toxicity allowance amount, which allows us to get three decoctions and more health and more toxicity. It works very well with this build. Now, for more of the obvious talents, we want precise blows for the critical hit damage and chance. We also want crushing blows, but you might not have room for this, and you might need to take some of the two talents that I have in the upper middle above my blood and wine mutagen uh, in this slot. But I have the space, so... I put this on. Now cat school techniques is almost a must. You get 100% critical hit damage if you're wearing four light pieces of armor. And with the levity uh, rune from Hearts of Stone, I put that in my Witcher armor. It makes all the armor light armor, regardless of what you're wearing. Next is Resolve. This is one of the good ones. This means that you do not lose adrenaline points when you get hit. Um, if you're a master dodger, you can remove this, but I suggest having this on. Remember, if we have three adrenaline points, we get 100% more critical hit damage. Now, these next two talents depend on if you want to focus more on a Ren strong attack build, or a Whirl fast attack build, or just a fast attack strong attack build. Right here I'm focusing on strong attacks, so I have strength training. If you want fast attacks, switch to that variant. Likewise below this, I have Rend. Um, if you want Whirl, switch Rend out for Whirl. Or if you don't want either, replace it with something else you care about. Now as far as what mutagen you want to use for Blood and Wine, I haven't done extensive testing, but Euphoria kind of seems far and away the best uh, for either a sign build or a alchemy-based uh, melee build. And that's because you can almost get the maximum. Right now with three decoctions and using like a swallow or a thunderbolt at the start, I have about 173% more sword damage throughout the fight. Uh, it just lasts throughout the fight. Uh, it's a great addition to this build, and that's how I get these big numbers. Remember, this is all about balance and preference to a certain extent. If you want more health, take off Cat School and put on Bear and take off the levity rune, so you'll have more heavy armor and more vitality. You want less health and more damage and more risk? Well, take off tissue transformation and put something else in its spot. 
Uh, it's up to you and your playstyle preference. This build, this setup right here, is more defensive, uh, excuse me, it's more offensive oriented, but still, it has over 10,000 HP. It's still very um, defensively oriented too. Let's also move on to gear. Remember, this isn't an RPG. If you're not getting the numbers I'm getting, it's probably because your gear is not as good as mine. And even my gear has some room to grow. Um, I don't have Grandmaster gear, for instance. But here are some key points. You want the Ursine Swords. You do. <laughs> you can't pass up the Ursine Swords. Why? Because they give you crit damage. You need crit damage for this build to work. You also need the Nelf Guardian Gauntlets. It gives you 50% crit damage on the gauntlets. And here I have the boots for more attack power, and I have the new moon trousers for more critical hit damage and critical hit chance. Now at the expense of some adrenaline point gain and monster damage resistance, you can switch out the ursine chest for a mastercrafted feline chest. Doing this will give you 30% more attack power and one more item towards that three, uh, that really nice three piece item bonus for the feline cat armor set for Grandmaster. Right now, however, I just like the way the Ursine armor looks too much to care about the 30% attack power, and uh, I find it doesn't really do much more damage at this point. Surprisingly, I did some tests, the damage wasn't noticeable, having 30% more attack power with the feline armor over the Ursine. Now let's talk about decoctions. Um, this is kind of up to preference and playstyle too. However, I will say Ikimara is almost a must for me. I will not not use Ikimara. The healing is just too powerful. I think it scales off damage and uh, as your damage increases, man, you get a lot of health in return for each hit. Next, the Water Hank Decoction gives you 50% more damage when your vitality is at its maximum, which is very hard to do, but it is possible. So if you're very good at dodging and avoiding damage, try this to get that extra bit of DPS in. Next, you may want to use the Echidna Decoction. Keep in mind, this does not work with the Stamina Drain that comes from using Whirl, yet it does work with Rend, and it does work uh, very well with Arc Griffin if you just want to use a strong attack build and get life that way. And here's Arc Griffin right here. Um, if you use just a regular strong attack, it doesn't have to be Rend. It drains as much stamina as you have, lowers the enemy's vitality, and that with Echidna gives you a very sizable uh, amount of health in return. Well, hopefully this video helped. That's it. Um, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments. I'll try to get back to you, and hopefully this uh, video gives you some drive to play Witcher 3. The new content is awesome, and there's lots of room uh, to increase your character's power level. Enjoy, friends.